Okay guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the Everwing Beast. This is a 6S 5-inch racer, and this is actually my first 5-inch uh, drone, uh, four 6S that I've flown. Uh, hasn't had a lot of reviews, I think there were a few. This model was out of stock for a while, I think uh, some of the initial reviewers had this, and then went out of stock, and then uh, recently came back in the stock. I believe right now it's currently on promotion sale. You can get the one that I have here with the FreeSky XM plus receiver, I believe it's around $230, which is not a bad price. However, a couple things that you need to know before you get this is that um, it comes with an older version of Betaflight 3.20, so you're going to need to update that. It doesn't have any tune or PIDs or anything. It wasn't set up, no modes, I don't believe, or anything like that. And there were a couple things that you need to fix before you actually go and fly this. Um, mainly, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, you know, it's a little disappointing that the Betaflight has to needs fixing, but it only took me about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to, to fix this stuff and get this in the air. Uh, mainly it has to do with the video transmitter. It has a tramp protocol, I believe, and they had it wired into the S-Bus right here. This is the yellow here. So there's a blue wire over there that I moved that was on the same uh, pad here as the yellow wire. And I think that they tried to get tramp working, but they couldn't, so they just went to uh, S bus instead, which is not a good idea because if you if you use aux to change modes, for example, it'll start it'll change channels on your video transmitter, which is bad, which means you might lose video and then end up crashing. So you definitely want to fix this before you get into the air. I moved um, the blue wire, which is the basically the the VTX remote control line, which is uh, when you're going to want to hook up to one of your UARTs. You want I hooked up to uh, UART three on the TX, so the blue wire right there is TX3. I think the one over here next to it is TX1. I'll put a diagram up on the screen as to what this was, uh, what the, um, the, the pinout is for this particular board. This board and this video transmitter are pretty common parts. I'll put part, part links to these parts in the description as well. So it's an F4 flight controller with an Omnibus uh, uh, Betaflight OSD and it has a built-in PDD so you can see the ESCs are connected here. I believe it has a current sensor as well, but I'll put links to those parts in the description as well as a little diagram of what this looks like uh, in terms of the pinouts. Uh, but all I had to do was move the blue wire from where it was here connected with the yellow wire to that pad over there. I'll show you a little before and after pictures as well. So that was pretty much it. And then I set up some uh, tramp protocol on UART 3 uh, after I flashed Betaflight 3.4. So I put 3.4.1, the latest Betaflight version on here. Also flashed the ESCs um, to the latest uh, BL Heli 32. These are yeah, these are the 32 bit ESCs, 3-6S, 50 amp fly color X cross or cross X ESCs. Pretty good ESCs, and just put the latest version of uh, BL Heli 32 in there. That was not a big deal. Latest version of Beta Flight. Fixed the uh, wiring here, and then I uh, also made it a, I made it a change to the camera as well because um, I couldn't get any up tilt on here, so. There was a little piece there on the back of the hook that was preventing me from up, til up, up tilting the camera. So I ended up taking it apart and cutting that off. But then I ended up moving the camera angle back down anyway because um, the field of view on this camera uh, vertically is really narrow. It's, I think it's a 16 by 9 CMOS camera. So uh, I ended up putting the camera back down anyway. And you'll see in the flight demo that this camera is going to limit you if you're going to be using this as a racer. You want to get a different camera on here like a I would recommend something like a, a Fox Shear Predator with a uh, really large vertical field of view then you'll have a, a better experience with racing. I may, I may do that in the future. Uh, I'm gonna probably use this as a test rig to uh, compare it to other 6S setups in the future because I mean overall the components are decent and the motors are good which by the way these are some uh, fly color what are these 2306 I think yeah, 23 to 6, 1800 kV, obviously, low kV for 6S. So, um, yeah, what else we got? We've got a buzzer in the back here with some LEDs. Uh, something to note here is that the XT60 was just dangling here in this open space in the back. No strain relief, so I did uh, zip tie this to the arm. So, you want to do that in case you crash and the battery gets ejected. Um, you want to have that there so it doesn't rip the pads off the flight controller and that'll ruin your day. Uh, overall, the build is nice. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like super top quality, but I mean it's not bad. And uh, you know, the, the arms are, are the carbon is cut pretty nicely. I like the color on the aluminum sides here. Um, 
wish there was a little bit more space there and on, on the back side, but I guess I kind of went there for aesthetics and design. The arms are only three millimeters thick, so that is, I think, a downside considering that it is kind of heavy considering it's only a three millimeter arm, but it is fairly stiff. And I believe, yeah, it is cut properly. But yeah, it would have been nicer if that was a four millimeter arm because uh, you, you know, as a razor, you're probably going to be crashing us. So that is, I think, a downside. So overall, if you're looking for a 6S uh, ready to fly or bite and fly racer uh, with a receiver, this is not a bad choice if you're willing to and have the capability to uh, do the updates uh, firmwares on the flight controller and ESCs and also make that little fix that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the 6S LiPo that I'm using on the demo is this China Hobby Lion 1000 milliamp hour 6S. I picked this up at Amazon. It's a pretty huge battery. Um, I think it weighs about the same as a 1500 uh, 4S LiPo. So I think you get a little bit more flight time on the 6S versus the 4S, but I think the benefit on the 6S is that you don't get as much voltage sag, especially on punch outs. Uh, so you're going to get a more consistent flight experience across the the, the 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 life of the whole battery instead of sort of towards the end where on a forest life we get a lot more voltage sag so you lose power and as a racer I think that's what that's kind of what the whole craze is about the 6s I think it they like the fact that they get more consistent performance out of their battery across the entire pack instead of just uh, the first like two-thirds of the flight and which actually will lead to shorter flight times okay so a few more specs here the motor motor distance is 220 millimeters and the front to back distance looks like it's about 166 millimeters. And the side to side distance is about 143, 144 millimeters. So it's a stretched X frame. And the uh, weight here without the battery is coming in uh, around 300 and looks like about 344 grams. And for those of you who are curious, the battery comes in at 187 grams. So for those of you who are wondering what kind of PIDs I used, I didn't do any tuning on it. I actually just flashed uh, 341 and went in fluid and I uh, figured I probably had to do some kind of tuning, but actually didn't have to do any tuning at all. And the motors, they did come down a little bit warm, so I might want to tune that out a little bit, but they weren't hot at all. I mean, uh, totally acceptable heat and, and it was a pretty hot day too. It was about, uh, about 100 degrees outside, so maybe that could be a reason why the motors were a little bit warm. So I don't think this needs a lot of tuning if you go with 341 and the props that came with the Gemfan 3042s and the battery, the 6S battery I'm using. So anyway, so here's the uh, flight demo. Okay, so I'll just be uh, flying with the stock Betaflight PIDs in uh, uh, Betaflight 3.4. Uh, let's see how this thing flies. Only has uh, more power than your typical 2306 motor feels like with the extra voltage, but not the difference doesn't seem that large. Uh, I forgot to change my rates. The rolls are a little slow. So I probably should be able to get a longer flight time versus a 4S, I'm guessing. Yeah, let's see, I should probably get I should probably be able to fly this to about 21 volts probably, I'm guessing. The camera angle on this the field of view vertically is not so great. I think this is a 16.9 CMOS camera. So if you're a racer, you're probably going to want to go to a 4.3 camera. Something like the uh, Foxier Arrow or the Predator. Yeah, I'm not used to the controller. I'm flying the Tyrannus X Lite, and the sticks feel really pretty weird. It's only a, only flown this transmitter a few times. I don't like the uh, the way the sticks feel. They feel too stiff to me. Unfortunately, I can't adjust that tension. All right, 
let's try some a little bit of maneuvering here. Surprisingly, flies pretty well on this dock tuned for 3 4. Obviously, they've done a lot of work to get it to fly well on 5 inch drones. Yeah, I saw a few other reviews of this drone. I think that they their problems were, deal, were had to do with the setup. It wasn't really set up from the factory. So if you do a little bit of work, uh, as I pointed out earlier in this video, uh, I think you'll have a pretty good flight experience. So far, so good. I really haven't done that much. I just fixed the S-Bus issue in the video transmitter so that the VTX remote control was working properly, and then I just updated the Betaflight to the newest version. It was on a pretty old version. Uh, it's about it. Also fixed the camera angle problem, but uh, as I'm seeing now, that the vertical field of view is not so great. So I actually didn't need to do that modification because you need a low low tilt for this one, and that because of the low a uh, uh, vertical field of view. I really can't tilt this forward that much. I'm just looking at the ground. So you can see uh, whenever I try and go faster, I'm really just looking at mostly at the ground. I just this does need a better camera in terms of the field of view. This might be an okay camera for freestyle, but if you want to fly low to the ground if you're a racer, which I think this kind of is a uh, gear towards racing, I think not really towards freestyle. You're going to want to switch this camera out. But the camera itself seems fine. Decent resolution, decent color, so this, this might be better for a freestyle setup. And no real complaints about the camera. It's just, a, just the vertical field of view. And I'm not sure if I got something on the sensor there, a little piece of dust on the upper right, or if that's just a piece of dirt they got on from taking off. The VTX seems to work pretty good. No real breakups in the signal. Well, I'm not really flying too far away. Not too many objects in the way either. Flying 6S is a little different. I'm, uh, I think the power is about the same, but I can feel like there's a little bit of extra weight. But I'm getting a really long flight time here, almost six minutes at 22.2 volts. Could probably go a little bit longer. All right, let's try and drain the rest of this battery here. Go with this circle. 21.7. That's another thing about the 6S LiPo is it doesn't sag as much. You can see there, I did a little punch out. Yeah, don't get as much sag, which is nice. If I do that kind of punch out on a 4S light, I get much more sag. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this demo. Yep, that battery's dead now, 20 volts. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in for a landing.